guys welcome back to my youtube channel to go funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back uh, today i'm going to be reacting to the army of satan part 16 the dark side of feminism sounds very very interesting uh so without wasting time let's get into the video This hadith tells us that the majority of the followers of Dajjal will be women and the impact of Dajjal's deception on women will be of such intensity that it will require men of a family to coercively stop their women from being deceived by the fitna of Dajjal. Meaning that when Dajjal's mission is reaching to its climax, something strange will happen to the world of women. A great progressive deception in the world is under the process today, which will cause the woman to reach to a point that when they see the Jal, they will go out and join him. And this deception is hidden behind a phenomenon called feminism. It doesn't mean that every woman is being deceived by the Jal, because there are Muslim sisters who are much better in their beliefs than most of the men. But it means that the most of the followers of Dajjal are women who came under the influence of Dajjal's deception in a way that they are being brainwashed and lose the capacity of rational thinking. They believe whatever is being presented to them by Dajjal or his followers. And that's how these women go out and join him. Therefore, they become like robots in the hands of Dajjal. Now, when we look at the issues of feminism, we have to understand that feminism in the West is quite different from what many of you might think feminism is as Muslims. Because the background, the history which produced feminism in the, in the West is different from the background for Muslims. There are some rights which Western feminism has introduced which are anti-family, which are really anti-femininity, which promote lesbianism and other deviant behaviors and practices. This has become char chartered in the UN in their women's conferences, these are being promoted. The boundaries of what was just fair and just. It now shifted into radical feminism, which identified men as being the enemy. They talk about the patriarchal society, that the only way women are going to be truly free is if they divorce themselves from men practically they especially now with technology women can have a baby without the direct intervention of a man they have sperm banks where you just make the arrangements you get it and you can have a child so they say we don't need men of course, they still need the men to provide the sperm. So it's not that you don't need men, right? But the point is that even marriage now was being looked at as being a place of oppression of women. Because the idea that the man, you know, is the head of the family and all this, no. They looked at that as being oppression. So they have launched an attack on the family itself 
And this is what has now dominated the women's conferences that are connected with the UN, etc. The American and European uh, feminists, you know, they have dominated the discussion. This is amazing how confused the women are today about their role. And they are confused because massive efforts are being done under the name of feminism in order to cause this confusion among the people. And as a result, the marriages and families, the primary building block of social and moral order are in shambles. Much of this is laid at the feet of feminist movement. Because it has overturned the thinking of women so dramatically, that they have forgotten their real precious value and important responsibilities that are given by their creator. What the public sees about the feminism is that women want equal pay and they want to be free from certain social structures. And we may think it's a movement for stopping violence against women, but the real agenda is much more serious. This is our prophet speaking. And he said, you will see Mirka Subyan, young people having massive wealth. Like Zuckerberg is a multi-billionaire before he was 30. And you, and, and, and you will see Mu'amaratun Nisa. You'll see the uh, movements to corrupt the women. Well, one of the things they told me was that um, he brought we were, he was at the house one night and uh, we, were told, we were talking and he started laughing. He said, Aaron, what do you think women's liberation was about? And uh, I said, I, I'm pretty conventional thinking about it at that point. I said, I think it's about women having the right to work, getting equal pay with men, just like they won the right to vote, you know? And he started to laugh. He said, you're an idiot. And I said, why am I an idiot? He said, you want, let me tell you what that was about. We, the Rockefellers, funded that. We funded Women's Lib, you know? And we're the ones who got all over the newspapers and television, the Rockefeller Foundation. He says, and you wanna know why? He says, there were two primary reasons. And they were, one reason was, 
We couldn't tax half the population before women's live. And the second reason was, now we get the kids in school at an early age. We can indoctrinate the kids how to think. So it breaks up their family. The, the kids start looking at the state as the family, as the school, as the officials, as their family, not as the parents teaching them. And so those are the two. A very interesting video. I've actually decided to cut it short so that um, I can comment a little. Uh, taking away children from their family so that the state can educate them according to what state standards is just wrong. That's why parents, even if your children go to school, have some time with them, teach them what you want them to learn in life. Not everything should be left to the state, to the government. I don't think that's right. And I was just wondering, where is the relation between witchcraft and feminism? What does that have to do with the people that are for feminism? You know? And to live in a world where men want to separate or women want to separate from men, then I don't know. Then where is the world headed to? What's the whole point of both existing but not wanting to be together? It's like, I, I, I don't even understand. Otherwise, I'd love to believe that feminism started with a very, very good purpose and some people uphold whatever purpose that was. Not everyone is an extremist. That's something we need to... um understand otherwise let me get to the other part of this so see you in a bit